Well, eventually it went whoosh and there was just flames and black smoke everywhere. Okay, well, it seems that somebody has volunteered me to tell some chemistry disaster stories every time we add a zero to the number of subscribers. And here we are at 100 subscribers. So here we go with our first chemistry disaster story. This story begins a long, long time ago when I was a fresh-faced undergraduate chemistry student. And this happened in a teaching laboratory. No surprises there. We were doing an experiment where we had to do a chemical reaction, take the dirty crude product, recrystallize it, which is a process where we dissolve something in some hot solvent and then quickly cool that solvent down to get little crystals that come out of pure product. And then after we'd done that, we had to transfer those crystals to a filter paper and then wash them with a solvent called diethyl ether. Now, the thing to know about diethyl ether is that it is a very volatile liquid. It evaporates very easily and quickly, and it is very flammable. And during that experiment, we had Bunsen burners on the desk. Now, that wasn't a problem as long as we kept the diethyl ether and the Bunsen burners separated. But the problem is, if they got too close, the diethyl ether would evaporate and because it's heavier than air, it would move along the surface of the desk. And if that Bunsen burner was too close, it would then contact the Bunsen burner and the flames would shoot all the way back to the filter paper. Well, we'd been warned about that in the manual and in person at the laboratory safety lecture. So it should have been okay except that my friend hadn't read the manual and hadn't listened in the safety lecture. So he was doing the next stage of his experiment with his Bunsen burner here, and just here was his filter paper that he'd just been using to wash his crystals with that diethyl ether. And sure enough, while he wasn't looking, the diethyl ether Vapor evaporated, crawled along the desk, and woof, the whole thing went up in flames. Flames about this high. Big problem, right? So what did he do? He looked around for the demonstrator or teaching assistant and said, fire. Just like that. He didn't shout or call for help or anything. He just went, fire. The demonstrator wasn't around at that point. Probably he was off helping another student with, with their experiment. And certainly just saying fire wasn't going to get anyone's attention. So he decided to take matters into his own hands and he picked up a pair of metal tongs that we use for handling uh, hot things and he grabbed hold of that burning filter paper and he took it, still burning, all the way round to the sink at the end of the bench. He dropped it in the sink and turned on the tap. Great thinking, right? Except no, because that filter paper was soaked in diethyl ether and diethyl ether does not mix with water and it's lighter than water. So that filter paper just floated on top of all of the water in the sink, still burning. And that still might have been okay, except that above the sink was a whole rack of bottle brushes. The brushes that we used for cleaning out our glassware after experiments. And they're all made with nylon fibers, which burn quite nicely, thank you very much. And so this burning filter paper set fire to the bottom bottle brushes, 
which set fire to the next row of bottle brushes, which set fire to the whole rack of bottle brushes. And before we knew it, there were great yellow orange flames going up to the ceiling full of black smoke. Well, you can believe this got the demonstrator's attention and he came running round the corner, grabbed hold of a fire extinguisher and put the whole thing out. Luckily, nobody got hurt. Luckily, also, there wasn't any serious damage apart from a bunch of burnt and melted bottle brushes, but this could have been a very serious accident. That said, it was also a little bit funny because it happened to my friend. Now, I actually tell this story in my own teaching labs to the students when they first join the lab because there are a lot of things that we can learn from it. As we get older, we get wiser because we learn from our experiences. So hopefully, we learn from our mistakes. But even better than learning from our own mistakes is learning from somebody else's mistakes. So let's do that. First of all, number one, my friend did not read the manual. Number two, he didn't listen to the safety lecture. Why not? Well, because we've all got better things to do than read manuals and listen to safety lectures, right? But here's the thing, if you don't, accidents will happen. And it's not just in chemistry laboratories, it's in any workplace situation or even hobbies or anything. We can have these serious accidents if we do not pay attention to the warnings that people are giving us about safety. Point number two, did he do what he was told to do if a fire happened? Did he shout, fire? No, he didn't. He just said it very quietly, uh, fire. So he didn't do what he was told to do. He decided to take matters into his own hands and walk around with a burning filter paper. He was lucky that the fire didn't spread to other parts of the laboratory. If he had shouted fire as he was supposed to have done, the teaching assistant could have come much faster and could have put the fire out right there on the bench with no problems. And then the third and another very important thing to understand is why didn't he shout fire? Why did he say it so quietly? And the answer is because he was embarrassed. And this is a very common reaction to serious accidents. People are embarrassed to have caused this accident and so they don't want to tell anyone. Very often, they literally tell nobody. In cases like this, he just said it very quietly. I've been teaching uh, undergraduate laboratories long enough now to have seen a couple of other fires too, and it's always the same. The student either says nothing or only says it very quietly. When there is a serious accident, you need to make a fuss. And even if that is personally embarrassing to you, you need to make sure that people are aware so that they can take whatever action they need to take. And if nothing else, at least do it to make sure that everybody learns from this mistake, so that everybody understands, oh right, we've got to be careful with Bunsen burners and diethyl ether, We've got to be listening to the safety lecture and we've got to be reading the manual. Well, I hope you enjoyed this story. And if you did, then uh, help me out with uh, a little click on the like button. There. And hopefully if you subscribe, then we'll get up to the next disaster story, which will be one of my own. Okay, see you next time.